Good morning. Welcome here on Pentecost Sunday, our joint service. Uh, yeah, just glad that everybody could make it to worship together. Hallelujah, chào mừng hội thánh đến với lễ của tuần ngày hôm nay. Cảm ơn Chúa vì Ngài đã cho chúng ta có một buổi sáng thật tuyệt vời để đến và chuẩn bị tinh thần để thờ phượng Chúa. Hallelujah. If you're able, I invite you to stand as we start worshiping this morning. This song we'll sing in Vietnamese and English. We'll start it in Vietnamese. You can clap your hands, put your hands together. Chúa con đấng cứu ẩn đã cứu vớt con từ chốn tôi tầm. Hỏi nghi ngàn đến muôn đời tâm linh con thao vui từ đây vì ngài đã đến. Nơi chân san cứu vớt người và Chúa đã đến với ta. Giêsu là con Chúa cha và ngài đã sống. Ngài đã
worshiping. Start this one in English. The splendor of the King, clothes in majesty. How great. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your church. We thank you for your presence here, Lord. As we sing, as we worship, as we pray, and as we hear your word today, help us to hear your voice and be changed through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 
하나님 다른 언어가 함께 모여 주님을 예배할 때 우리의 마음이 당신 안에서 하나가 되게 하시고 우리의 마음이 서로 연결되어서 주님을, 주님의 기쁨을 함께 누릴 수 있는 예배가 될수 있도록 도와주시옵소서 성령님 오심을 감사드립니다 예수님의 이름으로 기도합니다 Nhưng khi Đức Thánh Linh giáng trên các ngươi Thì các ngươi hãy làm chứng về ta Tại thành Jerusalem Cả xứ Dư Đê, xứ Samari Cho đến cùng trái đất Chúa ơi trong danh Chúa Giêsu Ngay trong giờ này Nguyện Thánh Linh của Chúa tuôn đổ Trên hết thảy mỗi một chúng con đang ngồi đây Để giờ thờ phượng của chúng con ngay giờ này Được sự đụng chạm của Thánh Linh Ngài Quyền năng của Chúa thi thố ngay trong giờ này Và chúng con cũng giống như các môn đồ ngày xưa Sẽ ra đi rao giảng phúc âm của Chúa Để nhiều người biết đến Chúa Và tiếp nhận Chúa làm cứu Chúa cuộc đời mình Như chúng con trong giờ này Trong danh Chúa Giêsu chúng con cầu nguyện AMEN
When the feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem. Just then, the pilgrims came all over from over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then when they heard one after another their own mother tongues being spoken, they were thunderstruck. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, aren't those all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in various mother tongues? Visitors from Metisopia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, and Phamaloia, Egypt and parts of Libya, belonging in Cyrene, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our language, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joked. They're drunk on cheap wine. You'll wait some God's whip some begin with a holy life and characterized by getting along with others. It is gentle and reasonable, overflowing with mercy and blessing, not hot one day and cold the next, not two-faced. You can all develop a healthy, robust community that lives right with God and enjoys its result only if you do the hard work of getting along with each other, treating each other with dignity and honor. Uh, good morning. My name is Nak Sun Jim, and English name is Nak Nak Nak. I'm a member of Sherbrooke English and Korean Church. So, I, before I start on my sermon, I test your language level. So can you, 안녕하세요, somebody knows, raise your hand. Yeah, and then, 디말레 카스토차, somebody knows this? this is how are you? This is a Nepalian. So, Banco Kong, I think, somebody know? Yeah, my pronunciation is okay. It's a commercial chart. It's a <laughs> Spanish, I think, yeah? No? <laughs> oh, Diego, write down for me. So. <laughs> and then, comment, chapa. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's a Tielstin Gillen. It is a, oh, Enu and Ken told it's a Hawaii in Ethiopia. Yeah, so, Ko Mede is a Sri Lankan, right? Ko Mede. Yeah? Yeah, Sri Lanka, yeah. Fieget Dier is a German, yeah? Can you say? <laughs> yeah. It's a Hawaii, yeah. <laughs> and in English, yeah, Hawaii, everybody knows, yeah. Wow, yeah, with many different languages, we live in multicultural and multi-language society. Yeah? Today is a Pentecost Sunday. What is Pentecost? Uh, Pastor Kevin wrote in the church bulletin, Pentecost is a celebration of the spirit of Jesus descending upon the church and breathing life into us. So although we come from different ethnic backgrounds, and speak different first language, we hold a joint worship service to celebrate Pentecost. Uh, we look forward to experiencing the koinonia that the Holy Spirit built among the disciples in Jerusalem during our worship service and the meal after service. Although most important things the Holy Spirit did was to help Jesus' disciples understand Jesus. 
The disciples spent three years with Jesus, yet they did not fully understand what Jesus said while he was alive. Moreover, they could not imagine why Jesus had to die on the cross. The night that Jesus was arrested, the disciples abandoned Jesus by running away. And Peter denied his relationship with Jesus three times. They were scared, disappointed, and they ran away because they did not understand what Jesus had previously foreshadowed about his suffering and death by religious leaders in Jerusalem. I believe that discipleship begins by knowing who Jesus is and understanding his word and teachings. Mark lists several symbolic events in deliberate steps to show how the disciples gradually began to understand Jesus. Uh, first, he tells the story of the miracle that allows blind, a blind man to see. Then he added the next story of the disciples arguing about who will be the greatest after Jesus restored the kingdom of Israel, showing that they had no idea of what Jesus meant on the way to Jerusalem. And then Mark tells the story of the blind beggar who gained his sight by Jesus and followed him. In this sequence, these stories show us how the disciples gradually came to understand Jesus and follow him. Whenever Jesus told the parable, he said, he who has ears, let him hear. In the book of Revelation, at the end of each message to the seven churches, it is written, he who has ear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit says to the churches. How uh, many people hear the message, but not many understand and follow the meaning of the word. I think we know that it is impossible to follow Jesus without understanding his word. Jesus knew his disciples did not understand what he was saying, so he promised to send the Holy Spirit to them when he left. The Holy Spirit role was to help Jesus' disciples remember him, understanding his word, and follow him. In the Gospel of John 14, Jesus said, I am telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when the Father sent the advocate as my representative, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and remind you of everything I have told you. Uh, when the disciples asked Jesus when he would restore the nation of Israel, Jesus again reminded them that the Holy Spirit would come by answering them. You do not know the time. It is the Father's will to determine the time. What you will receive is the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judah and Samaria and to the end of the world. After Jesus was taken up to heaven, the disciples gathered in Mark's upper room, although they still did not understand Jesus' words. They joined together constantly in prayer. When the day of Pentecost came, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they began to speak in many different languages, just as the Spirit enabled them. And something strange happened. People from all over the nation who gathered in Jerusalem at that time came to the disciples with amazement after hearing what the disciples said. Even though they came from different countries and spoke different languages, they were able to understand what the disciples said. They were surprised and asked, who healed them? declaring the wonders of God in our own language. The Holy Spirit helped people from other countries understand what the disciples declared about Jesus. 
the Holy Spirit opened their ear to hear Peter's message about Jesus. Then they were baptized and become believers. The Holy Spirit came to open people's heart to listen to the disciples' message and help them understand. Today's sermon is about understanding. To live well with others, we must get to know and understand each other. Understanding each other's language, emotion, facial expression, and gesture is important to take a lot of time effort. Sometimes it can be challenging for people from different cultures and their language to unite, worship, and form one church. It does not happen naturally by virtue of just spending time together or staying together in one place. It requires careful attention, consideration, time, and effort. Achieving koinonia or fellowship begin with understanding one another. Understanding means getting to know each other. Many work together to understand and learn about each other. We can nurture a loving fellowship. Though this will take time, the journey of fostering our understanding of one another will build up our shared memory that need our fellowship together. The Holy Spirit will come and help us understand each other to become one body. Uh, we all know about the relationship between dog and cat. We often assume dog and cat hate each other and fight when they meet. Why don't they get along when they meet? The reason many different reasons, but one is that dog and cat communicate through different behaviors. In other words, their communication styles are different. Cat and dog can only understand each other's behavior from their own perspective and open misunderstand each other's behavior. So, oh, go back to back one. Yeah, so I, I read one about different cat and cat learn out of fear or when it's trying to escape but dog love to learn. It's how they play and for them is a very fun activity. And then a cat purr when content, but dogs perceive growing as aggressive or treating. So cat and dog has a different communication style, so they yeah, misunderstood each other. However, it also said that dog and cat become good friends when they grow up together from a young age with their owners' uh, considerable attention and effort. Next slide. Sorry. If, if they grow up together when a young age, they can be good friends. As humans, we are not that different. We to have different communication styles, speak a different language, and have unique behaviors and habits that another maybe not understand at first glance. Many of us here come from very different backgrounds. We cannot speak each other's native language. And many of us, myself included, are not proficient in English, our shared language. You can see that if we do not pay careful attention to each other and that do not open our heart to learn each other's perspectives and the cultures, we too may misunderstand each other's behaviors, like a cat and dog meeting for the first time. Here are some pictures that help us see how different cultures we come from. This shape. Expression good luck in West, but it's said to be used as an insult in other countries like Vietnam and Iran. 
Second, in Korea Sign Language, middle finger signify oppa, mean old brother. But as, as we know, it is an insult that can cause immediate fight in English world. In the most country, it is used the expression of best, but in Thailand, it is considered an insult. And yeah, in many countries, it means okay. And in Korea, sometimes say money, but in Brazil, it is an in insult. Isn't it interesting? In each language and culture, words and signs can have various meanings that are oppositional or are similar to those of another language who are sign, culture. But thankfully, human can recognize and affirm each other's difference. We can take our time to learn and understand the difference and nuance of each other's background. Understanding means looking at the other person's word and action from their perspective, not my perspective. This ability is called empathy and empathic understanding. Uh, psychologists say empathy is the ability to recognize, understand, and share the thought and the feelings of another person, animal, fictional character. Developing empathy is crucial for establishing relationship and behaving compassionately. It involves experiencing another person's point of view rather than just the one's one. In every pro, uh, pro-social or helping behaviors that come from within rather than being forced. God gave us ability to empathize and understanding each other. In other words, we have been made, crafted by God to be empathic to one another. The Holy Spirit works within us to help us understand each other and build the church and the body of Jesus together. But we know this is not easy. It is not easy to become a multicultural church. It is not easy to, for people who do not speak the same language or come from the same culture to worship and be in the fellowship. I have been in the English-speaking Mennonite church for over 25 years. But it is still difficult. Sometimes I feel like I don't fully belong to the English-speaking community. But I also don't really belong to Korean-speaking community in Canada either. Nevertheless, I pursue a multicultural church because when I image the kingdom of God, I can see the images of all different people, poor and rich, people with disabilities, saints and sinners, all sitting around the same table with Jesus even cat and dogs. Tears come my eyes when I image the scenes and then my heart beat. I want to conclude my sermon by briefly sharing the three words in my mind to help us understand each other and become one body in Christ. The first is patient. The patient is a characteristic of God. Apostle Peter says that God is patient and waits for us. <coughs> we are familiar with the <coughs> story of God's people's long wait in the Bible. We, can, we know Abraham's waiting, Joseph's waiting, Moses' patience. The patience of the prophets as they long for the kingdom of God and the patience that await Jesus' disciples. The kind of patient is not hopeless waiting, but patient with hope. Uh, I work at a restaurant, and one of my responsibilities is to train new people when they come on board. It is not easy to train someone with absolutely no experience. 
it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of patience. Because the kitchen is busy, we can't wait indefinitely until they do well. <coughs> the head chef asked me, oh, oh thank you. <laughs> so the <coughs> head chef asked me whether the new person was trained and ready to do the job. Otherwise, it would be better to fire them right away and hire a new one. I usually ask for one more week. A, a week later, he asked, chef again, I asked for one more week. In this way, one young man has been working for a year, and another has been working for six months. It takes time and lots of energy. When I work with a cook who works slowly, I have to work twice as much in the same amount of time. Sometimes, Patient means sacrificing what I have. There are times when I have to give up what is mine. But patient bears fruit. As we patiently get to know each other, we will share the joy of koinonia. The second word is courage. What the Holy Spirit did when he came was to break down the unbreakable wall between Gentiles and Jews. Uh, in Acts 10, we hear the story of Peter, a Jew, and Cornelius, a Gentile, worshiping and eating together. At that time, it was against Jews' law for a Jew to eat with the Gentiles. So, as soon as Peter arrived at Cornelius' house, he said this, You know, it is against our law for a Jews man to enter the Gentile home like this or to associate with you. But God has shown me that I should no longer consider anyone impure or unclean. God tore down the walls built by the law and those built by people. Then through the Holy Spirit, God gave Pat, Peter the courage to cross the barriers and go to the Gentiles' house. We also have our language barriers, different cultural barriers, and the barriers from each other's life backgrounds. So we felt uncomfortable being with other groups. That is why we feel comfortable spending time with people with whom we can, we can communicate well and with similar life backgrounds. However, becoming a multicultural church requires the courage to step out of our comfortable zone and face the uncomfortable. It takes courage to invite people from different cultures to into our comfortable spaces. The third word is creativity. Creation is the nature of God. We have the creative, creati <coughs> sorry, creativities within us that resembles the image of God. That is an open mind. Whenever we face difficulty in our relationship, the easiest solution is to break up. The relationship no longer continues. But the Holy Spirit opened our heart and encouraged us to seek other paths, creative, creativity. I'm sorry. <laughs> Creatively. Yeah. It's better? <laughs> yeah. So I practice this word in the home, but still. Yeah. Creatively. Open, my, open our hearts. If we don't give up and decide to obey, the Holy Spirit will give us the wisdom to try new things. The church is not an institution, a club organized for fun, or NGO created for common purpose, but the body of Jesus, of which Jesus is the head. Each of us a part of that body. 
just as each member is connected to form the body of Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes and calls and connects people who speak English, Korean, Spanish, Sri Lankan, and Vietnamese to create Sherbrooke Church. The Holy Spirit comes and gives us ability to understand the word of Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes and gives us the ability to understand one another. The Holy Spirit comes and gives us the ability to build the body of Jesus Christ together. The Holy Spirit comes and gives us the ability to proclaim God's kingdom on earth together. The Holy Spirit comes and gives us the ability to live as Jesus' disciples. I finish my sermon reading James chapter 3, verse 17 to 18 uh, from the Message Bible. Real wisdom, God's wisdom, begun with a holy life characterized by getting along with others. It is a gentle, gentle and reasonable, overflowing with mercy and blessing, not hot one day and cold the next day. Not too faced. You can develop a healthy, robust community that lives right with God and enjoys its result only if you do the hard work of getting along with each other, tra treating each other with dignity and honors. I read one more and then. Real wisdom, God's wisdom, begun with a holy life characterized by getting along with others. It is gentle and reasonable, overflowing with mercy and blessing, not hot one day and cold the next, not too faced. You can develop a healthy, robust community that lives right with God and enjoy its result only if you do the hard work of getting along with each other, treating each other with dignity and honor. Amen.